it's a common pastime. I meet kids of all ages from uh, 8 to 80, and they're all interested in paper airplanes. The one man has taken it to the extreme. There's billions and billions of people on the planet, and nobody does what John Collins does. People think I'm a bit mad. <laughs> uh, but in a good way. I'm John Collins, the paper airplane guy. Now he's set his sights on a long distance feat that would break the barrier of anything done with a paper airplane ever before. A flight nearly as long as a football field. Believe it or not. John Collins loved paper airplanes from the time he was a small child. I, I discovered really early on that I could fold just a little bit better than my brother. There was four of us and we were super competitive. So anything you could do a little bit better than the other guys, you know, you were, that's what you were gonna focus on. His brothers moved on to other pursuits, but John's obsession with paper airplanes only grew. I studied origami for about 10 years and then took all those tricks back to paper airplane making. And then I started studying the aerodynamics. How is it? Why is it that plane is doing that? Over the course of his lifetime, John has designed a whole fleet of paper aircraft. The ultimate challenge here is really reconciling a lot of invisible forces. You've got gravity, air, a center of lift, and a center of gravity, making all of that balance. It's really kind of this fun puzzle. Each of John's planes specializes in a different type of flight. The Stinger is really a high-speed dart. It's kind of a muscle plane. A plane with small wings has to fly much faster than a plane with big wings. A broad wing glider, exactly the opposite of that Stinger idea, just floats really gently across the room. The boomerang plane. The big trick is that the wings are sloping downward. Most aircraft, and with most good paper airplanes, the wings slope upward so that if it gets rocked to one side, the plane will rock back to neutral. With this guy, you don't do that. The wings are drooping. So if you throw it leaned over, it stays leaned over. And because it's climbing, leaned over, climbing is a circle. The flapper is the same folding uh, sequence as the boomerang plane. With 11 by 17 paper, something really curious happens. A lot of the layers end right at the front of the plane, which makes the body of the plane really flexible. It starts climbing, only as it's climbing, the wings flex together. And then it stalls and the wings relax. And then it flies and stalls and flies and stalls. Were it not for the idea that it's moving like a bird flapping its wings, it'd be an awful plane. It's the folding, the precision of which he does it is astounding. It can't be off by more than a half a millimeter. Now, John is aiming for the sky. A world record for longest distance flown by a paper airplane, which currently stands at 207 feet. Going after the record, it really is kind of a childhood dream. Get up there, get up there, get up there, get up there, get up there. I went into this thing with you know, a lot of confidence. John figured out early on that he could fold this airplane in such a way that he could probably set a world record, but he needed a partner. He needed somebody who could actually be the propulsion unit. Someone with just the right combination of strength, accuracy, and finesse. The first guy had such big, strong hands, he was kind of crushing the planes a little bit. I worked with another guy who was a quarterback and um, you know, had an elbow up position and would spin his hand. And he was literally had such a snappy throw, he was ripping the planes in half, tearing them in half. And then I found Joe. I thought I would break the record the first day and you know, shake his hand and, and leave the place. And that's not how it went. 
Joe Ayu played two seasons as a college quarterback and three years of arena football. He would throw it so hard like a football, the paper would actually crumble in the front. John had to go back and redesign the paper to match his propulsion unit. He looked at this thing like a lot of throwers wouldn't. I kept modifying the plane, and Joe kept modifying his throw. The current record is 207 feet, made with a javelin-like plane nearly a decade ago. I decided we're going to go a whole new direction. We're going to do it with a glider. We're there. Come on, baby. Carry, 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 carry. Mysteriously, we were plateauing at it by 202. Oh. oh. Then when we saw it on this super slow-mo camera, we could see the big problem. Ridges were generating this ripple effect. After 18 months of modifying, training, and tweaking, John and Joe switched from ridged paper to the smoothest stock of paper they could find. And everything changed. Hit the wall! I've got lightning in a bottle. I can barely hold still. McClellan Air Force Base, outside of Sacramento, is home to much bigger aircraft. But today, it will be the backdrop to John and Joe's world record attempt. They only have one chance to get it right. Stay in their zone. Don't go, don't overpower, like 95%, 97. Stay right there. Even a minute error in the fold or the throw could dash all of their hopes. World record day, I was like, I, I didn't sleep. I wasn't eating good. John hands me the plane and says, all right, you know, throw that thing over the record. There it is, there it is. We are all over that one. Get up there, get up there, get up there, get up there, get up there! John's design reached 226 feet 10 inches, breaking the Guinness World Records title by 19 feet 6 inches. It was literally a dream come true. <laughs> It felt so great to break the record and, and then to see John's dream come to fruition. So I went from being crazy to just simply eccentric. <laughs> Until that point, I was nuts. <laughs> Anthony Kelly is constantly competing against himself. That's why I love being a ninja. Now, he's taking on his greatest challenge yet. To try and catch an arrow coming back down at about 80 and 90 miles an hour. Believe it. Or not. This is some mad collection of arrows that I've caught from people around the world. The 55-year-old Aussie has spent a lifetime distinguishing himself from the pack. This little baby that they made me catch over in Italy, I think it was, nearly killed me. He catches arrows with his bare hands, sometimes wearing a blindfold. Armadale may look like a peaceful place to grow up, but Anthony's childhood was anything but. I have five older brothers, and I used to get bullied a fair bit at school, and it was really a, a matter of survival. I started to do martial arts so I could defend myself. Sure enough, Anthony earned black belts in 20 different martial arts. But it wasn't his combat skill that made him world famous. I stumbled upon it quite strangely. There was an old 80s movie that a bloke had to catch an arrow to become a master of martial arts, you see. I performed it here in Armadale live for one of my martial arts demos. I sent the footage off to the world record people, and within weeks I was over in Madrid, Spain, to 20 million viewers doing it live on TV.
from that moment, I thought, well, this is pretty cool. Other people then, especially other television shows, started throwing um, objects literally at me. While he has taken on all kinds of objects, from chopsticks to paintballs, the arrows have been his greatest challenge and his most dangerous. I've always been worried that I'd shoot an arrow and it would hit his hand, hit his stomach. Grabbing a 100 plus mile an hour projectile mid-flight is a skill that has taken years to perfect. I just couldn't go and try and catch an arrow that's flying through the air without my hand moving super fast. So then I started to do some super fast hand skills. Now, he's taking his skills to new heights. I started to toy with the idea of shooting an arrow up in the air and catch it when it comes back down. The world record for catching your own arrow is 15 meters, about 45 feet and Anthony is determined to beat it. The higher an arrow flies in the air, the more speed it will pick up on the way down. At 15 meters, the arrow will fall back to Earth at 90 plus miles an hour. The same speed as a major league fastball. Anthony is using blunt end arrows for this stunt but at 90 miles an hour, they are still capable of tearing open flesh or shattering bone. He will need to catch the shaft just right to avoid injury. Each arrow is fitted with an altimeter, which determines altitude. doing a strong wind is making for unpredictable flights so Anthony tries something new to counter the wind he's trading in his tools I was using before a 25 pound bow I'm now going to a 60 pound bow this bow can shoot his arrow over 50 meters up into the air around 150 feet with a downward velocity reaching 90 miles an hour. Since the arrow is moving faster, there is less chance for the wind to blow it off course, but it comes at an even higher risk. It will come down a lot faster, which means I need to react quicker. Okay, coming in everyone. What is the official score, can you please read? The altimeter is saying 51.2 meters. 51.2 meters. Okay, so there's the, a, a new ball record. He only needed to pass 15 meters or 45 feet and walk away uninjured to break the record. He's bested that three times over, not even a scratch. I'm trying to get out of life as much as I can. Discovery.